Welcome to this edition of Access Together. These shows are made possible through the combined efforts of Shelby County Schools and GHS-TV. The shows are hosted by the members of the community and utilize the staff and facilities of Germantown High School. If you would like to watch our live stream or get more information about these shows, log on to our website, ghstv.org. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy the following presentation. Welcome to Let's Talk Money. My name is Kelly Bolton. I'm thrilled you could tune in today as we discuss core skills to be successful in the classroom, boardroom, and life. Many of these skills can be developed at an early age, and today we're honored to have with us Germantown High School's very own Rose Clemenson, who is a guidance counselor who works with students on a daily basis, help them achieve their goals. So without further ado, please join me as we welcome Rose. Rose, thanks for coming. Oh. It's a pleasure. How I've much, been looking forward to this. How much fun for you to be here on set at a school where you have um, guided and counseled many of these students all the way into high school. So tell me about yourself, about your background. How'd you get into this? Well, first of all, if I, if, if I start looking like I'm and sound like I'm talking to a ninth grader, that's what I do most that's of the time. Okay. That's okay. I, I won't take time. offense. But I, kinda, I like offense. looking um, at an adult here talking. Um, well, I hate to admit it. I started in 1971. You were teaching very, English, very young. Teaching English. And um, I moved a couple different places. I was in, I'm from Minneapolis, okay. Minnesota. Right. And I followed my husband in the military to Kansas. And um, so I taught there five years. Taught five years in Minneapolis. And I've always been involved with public speaking or journalism. And when I moved to Memphis in 1980, I... Um, was hired to do the newspaper and teach English. And so I've done that, and then about 20 years ago, I went back to school and got my degree in psychology and guidance counseling. And I've been doing that ever since. And um, so I don't wanna say exactly how many years, yeah. but I'm gonna say 40 plus. <clears throat> Still love every day if not getting wonderful. up and doing what I'm doing. And that makes it not, it's not work when you love doing it. And when I talk to parents, as I'm going to do this evening, um, I ask th of this, not only of them, but they should ask that of me, that I be the best parent I can be mm -hmm. and is the best counselor I can be. Because mm -hmm. my child is in their world and their child is in my child's world. Right. And so we're all on the same team. And that's how I approach every day, every school year, every program that I do is that it's got to be our best. It's got to be our best. Right. Yes. Isn't that the truth? Everything should be our best. Well, that's wonderful. And I'm sure it's very rewarding for you to be a guidance counselor and uh, to see how the people that you've been involved in their lives um, thrive. I mean, and see what they do later on. And you think, maybe I had a little bit to do with that. You know, maybe the advice or guidance changed them or put them on the right course. Absolutely. And what I say to parents and students, first of all, there are no shortcuts in the pursuit of excellence. Mm. And as parents, as teachers, as educators, as counselors, we have to do our best. And one thing is, if we can get our children, our own personal children, or our children in the school, to learn to conquer their problems, not by us eliminating anything, by helping them through it. I always mm -hmm. say, the teachers will say, well, I, I really need a teacher that's a, easier or a, a class that's easier. Mm. I always wanted challenging. I always wanted difficulty mm -hmm. for my child. And then I look at them and I say, is life easy? Right. And they go, well, no, that's my point. And so we mm -hmm. have to help our children through this. And like I had said, we want excellence. There are no shortcuts. Right. Because whenever you take a yeah. shortcut, you can stumble, fall, miss something, something get misinterpreted. We just have to do it, do our best, and work toward the common goal of us all. Well, I like that. I like that thought of saying that they need to be challenged and not try to take 
the easy path um, or because the easy path is not what life is all about. And it seems to me when I watch children and adults for that matter, when they're put to a challenge and you step back to some degree and let them navigate it, you know, provide some guardrails, navigate it on their own. And when they're successful, there's so much more pleasure than if you just picked it up and did it for them. Oh, absolutely. And self-esteem is built. Mm -hmm. When you accomplish something you didn't think you could do. And so I'm constantly, I call them, I call myself an academic coach. Mm -hmm. I never played sports very well, but I can coach you through what needs to be done to be successful in school. I like the quote from Fred Smith, our very own Memphis Fred mm -hmm. Smith, who says, don't be afraid to swing and miss. Isn't that the truth? And I'm thinking so many children start ninth grade, and I say children, I, know, I really don't mean children, but they start so timid and afraid, and they've been top of the heap in eighth grade, in middle school. Don't be afraid to Try something new. Be a trailblazer. And um, don't be afraid to swing and miss. And we learn from our mistakes. Mm -hmm. So when they bring students to me or I'm talking to classes and they go, oh, you must have heard about me. or you so doesn't matter. If we learn from our mistakes, we're on top of things. Right. You know, and you move forward. You're a bigger, better, stronger oh, person a because absolutely. of it. But do you think when you talk about um, taking on challenges, it it seems to me that when I see some of the young people today, depending on what age you're looking at, in some cases it seems that either, whether it's parents pushing them or teachers pushing them almost too hard, whether it's in sports or it's in uh, pursuit of academics or socially or whatever it might be, sometimes you see and it might be the parents or the teacher's agenda and not the students and you see and almost look they're being pushed too far like so how do you create that balance when I detect that and I see that and observe that um, I remind them this is their journey mm -hmm. this is their journey um, they've got to define themselves mm -hmm. um, if someone asks me what has changed since you started up to now. And, and I say, you know, one thing that has not changed, and, I, and, and I, I'm very sincere about this, we still look to our young people for mm -hmm. hope. Oh, absolutely. Um, hope for our country, hope for our family, hope for our school. We want young people to do their best, and we are behind them. We don't want to hold them back. So in kind of answer to your question, we don't want to hold them back we don't want to push them so far ahead right. that they stop, because some kids will just stop. Um, there has to be that we instill in them that drive to be their best and to think beyond their own self-absorption, um, mm -hmm. but the school, our country, our family unit, there's so many things that I think our students have missed. Um, you know, when we talk about what is hip versus what is smart, mm -hmm. and I do a lot on this, um, hip is for the moment. Right. Smart endures. Right. Um, hip is defined by others. Smart's defined by performance. Yes. That hip makes is only sense. for the moment. Yeah. Smart is timeless. Hip is often hard to define, but smart is always logically defendable. And you know, that is something our children definitely need to learn, and even as adults. Well, we're going to take a short break, and we're going to come back to hip and smart. Um, and we'll resume the exciting discussion about developing young leaders. When they test you, stand firm and move only when you hear the seatbelt click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Open road, here comes the Hefley family. Whether it's a short trip or a long haul. Estimated time, 47 hours. They will beg. You're hungry? I'm happy to provide. They will plead. Deep fried butter on a stick. But whatever you do, 
don't wimp out. Now you're talking? Make them buckle up. He can't hurt. Remember, safety first. Cheese curls. Second. Are you orange? You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome back to Let's Talk Money. If you're just tuning in, I'm Kelly Bolton, and today we've been discussing how young adults can prepare themselves for future academic pursuits as well as careers. Helping lead this conversation, we have Rose Clemenson, a ninth grade guidance counselor with Germantown High School, sharing how we can help mold these future business and community leaders. So, Rose, you were just talking about hip versus smart. Can I be hip and smart? Yes, I think you can be. Good. <laughs> now, what I'm saying is when I talk to, you know, I talk to adolescents all the time and I predominantly talk to ninth graders, getting them ready for high school, you know, they're all caught up in a trend. Right. And I always say, let's talk hip and let's talk smart. Right. You know, hip is flash. Right. Smart is substance. Hip is driven by trends. Mm. Smart is driven by performance. And, and my point is, do you have anything in your closet that you bought and you never wore? Mm-hmm. Do you have anything that you've worn once and you can't believe you bought it? Right. Have That's kind of how I'm always putting them in perspective. Well, and hip to me is sometimes it's that desire to please other people Abs or to absolutely. create Abs an image mm -hmm. and instead of creating your own. And I think we, I think I see a lot of children forget that they're trying to please themselves and pursue their dreams and what they're capable of and not try to conform with what everyone else thinks or should do, which is kind of what led me to that question about are our children being pushed too far sometimes because you see, you know, book after book after book written about the helicopter parent and these, and and whether it's faculty, teachers, students, coaches, pushing, pushing kids so far and not pausing for that moment to help the the child figure out what it is they want to pursue because you don't want them to wake up and I know we talked about your son and he's obviously done very well we talked about that during the break um, but you wouldn't want him to wake up and have gotten out of med school and said I wanted to be an engineer mom made me go to med school and start all over because they never took the, so nobody ever took time to find out what he wanted you have to listen to your children. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I knew from, from an early age what he wanted to do, so I was able to kind of perpetuate that and kind of move that along. But one thing I, would, I believe about schools and about communities is if you've got to make a change, make it when you can, right. not when you have to. And I believe at Germantown High School, or education per se, is... We've ma we're making changes all the time. And if you don't, you're gonna lose out. Um, I know we've gone through a trend in my many years of teaching where it was strictly, we're gonna go to college. Then it went down to vocational. And then it flipped back to everyone's going to college, all children are going to college. Well, now we're learning that um, there's real value in the vocational area and letting children figure out what they want. And just a week ago, I was at William R. Moore, mm -hmm. um, totally impressed with what I saw. And I wanted to bring everyone at school to William R. Moore and see, because I do see in the eyes of many children, they don't know what they want to mm -hmm. do. And um, I always say to parents, my child doesn't know what he wants to do. And I'll say, well, did he ever say he wanted to be a cowboy? or fireman, or your daughter mm -hmm. wanted to be a nurse or a ballerina. Well, yes. yes. And I My said, daughter wanted to be a dolphin trainer. <laughs> and I said, well, you're on the right track. Right. What concerns me mm -hmm. and others is when, when someone says, I don't have a clue. I don't know what I want to do. As soon as you can get an individual to have an auto-suggestion as to, mm -hmm. and that means what they see themselves doing, if they see themselves making A's, if they see themselves doing their homework every night, if they see themselves looking forward into the future. I, I mean, right now, I'm telling my ninth graders, you are a tenth grader more than you're a ninth grader. They sit up straight, shoulders back. They look me in the eye. Really? They needed to hear that. And I think that parents do have to be careful and not push. Um, 
and give them that little wiggle room. And don't let them be afraid to fail. Mm -hmm. And use those as just great lessons. Which brings me to, um, I'm going to say this, and I say that, I've, said this, I've said this at every PTA meeting. Parenting as counselors, as teachers, is not as much about what you know, but what you can get your child to understand. Mm -hmm. And our children today don't need us for information. They get it online. Uh, they're smarter than they, we are. They get <laughs> that where, the, where they get it, yes. they get it. But they've got to have parents. They've got to have teachers and counselors for the interpretation. You can tell your child, absolutely don't cross that street. And that famous no. But if you say, if you do that, this is what could happen. This is what I've seen happen. This happened to me. We don't take the time, a lot of parents today, a lot of teachers to say, the reason that we're doing it this way is because this is the outcome that we want. That is so wise. And when you said that, I had a zillion things that ran through my head because you're right as a parent, because I'm, I'm a, a parent um, of one child, and I think of the times that over the years I might have just said, no, don't do this, but a lot of times it's because we're rushed in a hurry. We've got something else, and the explanation is just too long. And then we have a tendency just to jump in and do it for them because it's easier than explaining it all. So that creates issues too. So I'm going to say this after listening to you, and yes. part of what I'm saying mm -hmm. is the process of parenting, of teaching, of counseling, the process is every bit as important as the content. I agree. And you know, there's no handbook for no. being a parent. Mm -hmm. So we end up as parents relying so much on our teachers because the teachers and the guidance counselors are with the children more than parents are many times. And some people come home to no parent. Well, they're telling us we've got maybe about a minute left. Okay. So um, why, we'll say a few more things and then we're going to take a break and we're going to come back and and keep talking so okay the other thing I really stress is well I remember when he was in the fourth grade or the fifth grade here's the thing I remind you you can look backward or you can move forward but you can't do both it's very yeah. hard if you're always looking backward and you're not listening to me how I can move you forward mm -hmm. then we're not getting anything right and it's sort of like you can be pitiful and powerful, but you can't be both. Well. So what, what do you want me to do with your child? You're sitting here and you're saying it's the teachers this, it's the homework this, it's the schools this, but wait a minute now. Do you want to be pitiful or powerful? Do you want to look back or can we move forward? And I think those are important questions you have to ask. And that's when I worry, when I see parents themselves don't know which right. way to go. And then I always say, if you come to the guidance office for advice and guidance, listen to what we say. Yep. You came for a reason. You know, you We're going to give you, know, you advice I, I, and guidance. And I, right. and I tell kids mm -hmm. all the time, I said, you know, I'm honest and I don't give bad advice. I used to always tell my son, you need to make an appointment with me. People make appointments. I'll see if I can work you in. I love but it. But you need to listen to my I advice. Love it. And I'll say to the kids, you came to me, listen to what I'm having to say. Plus, many of them don't believe their parents know anything. Right. They're all grown. And I'll say, one of your best resources are your parents. They're going to give you good advice. They are. You've and they're got to going listen. To, and they're going to be honest. Absolutely. And they don't see that. No, and so I don't. work very hard in advocating for parents, advocating for other teachers, mm -hmm. advocating for our coaches, our club sponsors. Um, they need positive adults. Absolutely. And our kids today need good counsel. Absolutely. Well, we're going to take another short break. And when we return, we're going to finish up our discussion with Rose. So please stick around.
So, so we, we were, were walking, walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom got me turkey and cheese. She's I smart. Really cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. Mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't I have really another bad day I really hope I don't have another school. bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Thank you for joining us on Let's Talk Money. If you're just tuning in, I am Kelly Bolton, and we've been talking with Rose Clemenson, guidance counselor at Germantown High School, as she shares advice she gives to her students and their families. So, Rose, let's continue our discussion. Um, we could stay here all day. You are just <laughs> full of information. Well, you know, I've got some uh, a few years under my belt, and um, I do think I, I was in the school system for 13 years before I had my child. Well, let me tell you something. Having that child puts everything mm -hmm. in a whole different perspective. Yes. Um, I want to talk just a little bit. Of, again, I talk to children all day, all grade, all age levels, all grade levels. You know, we talk about character. Our parents want us to be a certain way. They they want us to be good people. They want us to be good, productive citizens. And the one thing that when people come in and sit, students come in and sit down, and they're this, this, and this, and this, and this. I've got four agreements that I tell them and I say wise person told me this and she happened to be in finance really many, very good many years maybe ago, we're just so all wise they're right? not they're not original <laughs> yeah but I do really and I've got it all typed up and I hand them this piece of paper um, be impeccable with your word speak with integrity number two I, I speak this every day don't take anything personally Nothing others do is a result of you. And what I I'm like saying is, that one and the thing lot. that I just I like all of them, but I that just, one was well, really good. And, yeah. And the thing I just love is, she said this, he said. Well, wait a minute now. And I love this. Now again, this isn't mm -hmm. my line. It's Oprah Winfrey's, but she says, "Well, you can steal it." I, I, I'm going to steal <laughs> it because I, I do use this. What someone thinks of you is none of your business. None of your business. So I'm sitting here looking at you right now, mm -hmm. and I'm, as I'm talking to students, yeah. you're probably saying, that lady, as a, that's fine. That is absolutely fine. But I'm going to tell you what you came in for. Right. But what you think of me is really your own business. Right. So when you leave my office, or you go into the classroom, mm -hmm. or you get on the bus, or you go home, or you go to the grocery, you go to the library, remember, don't take anything personally. I mean, we have to be sensitive and kind but don't take it personally and I spend a lot of times in the area of bullying in the area of bull bullying oh, I can imagine and I go we deal with it a lot but I feel like we've gotten a good handle on it at Germantown High School we don't tolerate it and we jump on it immediately and yes. most of them are brought to me and we work through it and, and some of it's so subtle though it's you know that there's bullying, but how you quantify it because it's social media bullying or, oh. which is hard to quantify. Which, unless it's just a, a picture or words, oh, but. It, it, it is a constant thing, mm -hmm. but I will tell you this, more and more parents are holding on to the phones. Mm -hmm. More and more kids are coming to school without the phone. And like I would tell my son, I have you at school for education. You know, I, I, that's what I need you to be engaged in. And I really did stress that. So my four, be impeccable with your words. Don't take anything personally. Number three, don't make assumptions. Communicate with others. Ask questions. Clarify. And the last one, always do your best. If you always do your best, you're impeccable with your word. If you don't take everything, if you, if you don't take anything personally, then you will 
eliminate yourself from a, a lot of suffering and don't make assumptions. Um, my belief has always been do things the right way. Mm. Do things the right way and discover the excellence inside other people. Um, I'll say you don't have to take them home for, for, for dinner, but you've got to be kind. And maybe there's something in that person in, in conversations, um, watching them, listening to them, that would really benefit you. Um, the other thing is a lot of students have a lot of excuses. And so do parents. And so do adults and parents. And parents. I was thinking I said, as you were talking, all of these words could be used, be used for adults. And, and yeah. there are obstacles. And I tell mm -hmm. them when they start that first day in the ninth grade, some people get sidetracked and never make it. They struggle all year. Others, the ones we admire, get it done. And it's called determination. Mm -hmm. So to me, when I start thinking, don't be afraid to take a swing and miss. Mm -hmm. Do my four agreements. There are obstacles. Don't get sidetracked. Be the ones that we admire and determine and get it done. Don't look backwards. Move forward. Are you going to write a book? Oh, I, <laughs> well, because I'm, I'm thinking when this show is over, I got to write all this down because this isn't just for kids. And, and I and I'm going to say this because this is how I start, and I've done this for probably nine years. The summer uh -huh. transition day. Every individual has value, and has something to make others' lives rich. So when they come into us, I say I don't want to know the past. I don't want to know that you came from a long line of English teacher haters. Right. And I, lo I, love that. <laughs> I love that. My mom didn't like English either. Yeah. I said, okay. Each of us is more than the worst thing we've ever done. Each of us is more than the worst thing we've ever done. And when you come to this school on this day, it's a new beginning on the first day of school. New school, new schedule, new administrators, new counselors. New good-looking girls, new good-looking mm -hmm. boys, new swag. Yeah. You're the new. You're the new. And parents, parents without, people without children, mm -hmm. you watch the news, it's doom and gloom. But you know what? These kids are our new and our bright. Wow. They are tomorrow. They're the shining. They're the sparkle. They're our heritage. They're the new. Well, and I, I say, wish you, are you the would new. write a book. I'm going to buy your first copy of the book. Oh, shoot. We're going to have to end this show, but you write the book, and I want the first copy autographed. Oh. So <laughs> I'm going to thank Rose Clemenson with, for being with us today. We have really enjoyed the show, and we thank you for tuning in. For more information on the show, please check us out on the web at ghstv.org, where we're streaming live 24 hours a day. You can also check us out on Facebook and Twitter. So please join us again next month on Let's Talk Money as we continue to explore the thriving Memphis business community.